Guys, play super hot. It's the most innovative shooter I've seen in years. It's genuinely amazing, and I can't say anything but good about it. The mechanics are excellent, there's relatively no jank, and the gameplay loop is fun and infinitely replayable. I think it's genuinely impossible to argue that Superhot isn't the best game of all time. FPS games are one of the most common genres of game out there, becoming especially popular in recent years. Obviously, they aren't exactly known for their creativity. At times, it almost seems like the majority of games nowadays are just FPSs, and with companies like Activision releasing a new Call of Duty game each and every year, they make the entire genre look worse overall. But amongst all these repetitive, bland, untoasted wheat bread games, comes an FPS game that's truly unique. Super Hot was created by Piotr Iwaniki and began development in 2013. It started out as an online demo which quickly picked up traction, and roughly three years later, in February 2016, the game was released. And it could very well be one of the most unique FPS games of all time. The game starts with the operating system booting up. You then get a text from your friend on a private messaging app. He asks if you played Super Hot yet, and you haven't. He sends you a link to the game, and you start killing red dudes. The general gameplay loop is simple. Time only moves when you move, but a good gimmick isn't enough to make a masterpiece. There's still a lot more that needs to come into play. Lining up a bunch of shots just to barely hit every enemy before they could even fight back is incredibly empowering. There really is no feeling quite like throwing your own empty gun at someone else, only to shoot them with their own gun. But when you make it past the subway level, something goes wrong. Instead of going to the next level like you should, you stay in the level, which is now completely lifeless, barren, and empty. Then the entire world around you comes crumbling down, destroying itself in front of your very eyes. It's almost as if the game itself recognized you were playing it and booted you out intentionally. You talk more with your friend, and then they give you an updated version of the game, this time featuring more levels. The difficulty progression for the levels is slow, but steady. It gives you the time to properly develop your skills before completely destroying you with later levels. The aesthetic adds a lot to the gameplay too. The simple wireframe-like visuals help you focus on what's important, and with the choices of colors, you could quickly distinguish exactly what to do instantly. The background of the maps are always in white, with the enemies in red. This allows you to know exactly what you're seeing at a quick glance. The throwable objects and weapons are also colored in black, which makes them stand out amongst the white background as well as the red enemies. That makes it easy to not only see what the items around you are, but also to see what your enemy's holding. After the next few levels, the game kicks you out again. You could really feel that your presence is unwanted, even without a single line of dialogue being exchanged. You have another conversation with your homie, and you get another copy of the game. But this one's password protected. You guess at a password, and it doesn't work. Then you try again, and it does. I'm not really sure why exactly you get allowed back in. Maybe the game actually wants you to play it the whole time. Nonetheless, after a single level, you get noticed by someone working on the game itself. And as he shows in the game, you get kicked out yet again. You begin to text your friend, but then something strange occurs. All the messages you send get changed and edited before they go through. When you finally get back in the game, you're put in the tutorial level. And it's obviously not great. I mean, they really didn't need to put you in a cage, but um... What? After that, you get back to some regular levels. The level design in this game works perfectly with the concept, and again, because of the use of contrasting colors, you're able to see where an enemy might be at a moment's notice. Another thing is that the enemies rarely ever hide behind walls. When you play a level in Super Hot, you know exactly where the enemies are coming from. Then you get put back in the cage, and man, these guys really do have Stormtrooper aim. Eventually though, they hit you, and you move on. Some of the levels after this point are really starting to hammer in on the challenge aspect of the game. The elevator level is a real standout here, since it's not only a super fun idea, but it was also executed pretty well. The elevator is an enclosed space, 
and has three red dudes with guns about to shoot you. You have to hit one, steal his gun, and then shoot them all with it. Then you have to dispose of the two shotgun wielders at the top. More lore happens, and the game tells you to try and disconnect. Hitting the escape key will result in... nothing. But eventually it lets you out. Then you get texts from the guy who put you in the thing. He forces you to promise him to stop playing the game. And you agree, because you really don't have any other options anyways. Then you immediately get back to playing. Yeah. The levels are still getting more and more challenging with each and every altercation. You get kicked back out of the game eventually, but this time, you can go for a walk home to visit yourself. The man completely kicks you out of the game, and the only way to continue after this point is to full-on restart the game in order to keep playing. Once you get back on, your entire computer seems to be glitched. You try to text your friends, but then the only words you can send are super hot. Your friend stops texting you, but at that point, you don't care. You just want to get back to playing the game. Once you re-enter into the game, you get put back into the cage, but this time in a more pixelated version. But don't worry, the system will set you free. When you finally get back to playing, you unlock a new ability. At this point, you freed your mind from the mortal realm, and you can now use that ability to transfer into the mind of an NPC. This element adds another form of strategy to the game, because that's really what the game is. It's a turn-based strategy disguised as a first-person shooter. Every time you shoot a gun, push an enemy, or even do as little as taking a step, you're using your turn. The enemies are then able to attempt to shoot you. After finishing the levels, you find yourself back to talking to the guy. You're informed that you'll be used as a tool, used to destroy the enemy from the inside. When asked for details, if you say yes, you get greeted to a giant block of text. This is actually the EULA, or the End User License Agreement, also known as those contracts most people completely ignore when signing up to a service. But the thing with this one is that it gives whoever's behind the game permission to do some pretty messed up stuff. After agreeing to it, we get to play some more levels, and these are where the challenge really starts to ramp up. Each and every level after this point took me a good while to beat on my first playthrough, and even now that I'm good at the game, I still die a couple times while trying to beat them. Super Hot is a game that forces you to think, and if you don't, well, you better be really good at games. Because to play the game in real time, you'll more than likely end up dead before you can even attempt anything. But whenever you can play the game in real time, it's an amazing feeling. It's one of the reasons I find the speedrunning scene for this game to be so interesting. People need to beat a game where you can slow down time, while slowing it down as minimally as possible. And despite how agonizing they can be at times, the level designs here are some of the best in the game. You can tell that by now, the game is pulling no punches. But when you finally beat these levels, that rewarding feeling is euphoric. At long last, you finally make it to the core. You have to use your newfound body swap power to input your consciousness into the core itself. Everything starts out fine, but after a while, they figure out exactly what you're doing. You've made it to the last bunch of levels in the game. Here, the goal is no longer to kill all your enemies. There's simply too many around you. No, you only need to be able to survive long enough to hot switch directly into the core. And once you wait long enough, the time eventually comes, and you become one with the pyramid. Finally being able to eliminate all the red guys that did you dirty feels like poetic justice. At this point, you've probably been on this one section longer than any point in the whole game. So it feels like these guys really do deserve their fate. After taking control of the core, you can finally let your mind be severed from your mortal body, and you can ascend to be completely enveloped into the core itself. But the adventure doesn't stop there. Super Hot also has a plethora of content outside of the base game, with several challenges, like the one where you play a version of Super Hot that's meant to look like the 2013 demo. Speaking of the prototype, while it's similar to the final release, the differences are apparent. You can also see some ideas here that end up making their way into future games. But the way everything looked and functioned was obviously a bit different. If there's one word I would use to describe Super Hot, that word would be fair. Both the character you're playing as, as well as the enemies, are all very fragile. Hitting enemies can destroy them instantly, but you yourself have the same weakness. Super Hot is a pretty great game in my opinion. Honestly, one of my favorites. But after achieving such a well-reviewed game, an important question began to linger in people's minds. What's next? Well, they ended up making Super Hot VR. While the title itself implies it's a VR port of the first game, Super Hot VR is more like a proper sequel than anything else, having its very own levels and mechanics. So what happens when you take an already amazing game and then make a sequel in VR? You get one of the most critically acclaimed VR games to date.
The game begins in a parallel to the first one, with Pi OS loading back up, but unlike the first game, this time you're immediately thrown back into gameplay. You stand in a completely empty room, with nothing but a floating gun in front of you. So you pick it up, only to be brought into the first level. Once again, time only moves when you move. You make your way through a couple of caged-in levels. These are similar, but not identical, to some levels from the first game. Here's where you get to learn the basic mechanics of the game. The next level is more of the same. This level has you unarmed, and you have to dodge a flurry of bullets left by this one red guy as he approaches you. It's the same for the next few levels. Each one teaches you a new mechanic that you'll need to master for later on in the game. Here you can see dual wielding and throwing. Quite a lot of throwing, actually. So as you can already see, Super Hot VR has some slightly tweaked gameplay from the original. The main difference being that you remain stationary at all times, as the only method of movement is by moving in real life, which some people just don't have the space for. Then we make it to the last level of the first world. Once you finish the level, the game tells you to show your dedication. And with no other options, you do just that. Your headset flies off, and then you're back in your apartment. This is where the game gets completely meta. You're playing a VR game in a room, in a VR game in a room. Super Hot VR added something much needed to the Super Hot formula, that being immersion. The first Super Hot was about getting so attached to a video game that you become a part of it, and by putting you into the world of the game, Super Hot VR can achieve unmatched levels of immersion. The apartment isn't exactly clean to say the least, with tons of sticky notes lining the walls. The game doesn't directly tell you what to do here, but because there's only really one thing you can interact with, you insert the next disc and begin playing more Super Hot. The levels in this game almost seem to have a grander scope than the first, with each level having these big environments around you, even while you could barely move, if at all. Next, we go to a graveyard, then an office, and then to a dinner party. Super Hot, especially in VR, makes you feel way cooler than you actually are. The power trip you get each time you pass a level is very similar to the first game. You feel untouchable, and that's because you literally can't be touched if you want to pass a level alive. Get shot once, and you have to restart the whole lineup of levels. After the dinner party, you're brought up to the top of the building, and the game forces you to jump. When you hit the ground, you're brought back to the apartment. On the screens in your apartment, the game itself says you're dedicated, and the monitor gives you a disc, and when you play it, you gain a new ability. So in this game, instead of the hot switch ability, we now have a completely new power. Basically, when you don't have a weapon, you can now hold down both triggers at the same time and quite literally blow the minds of those around you. The game lets you play through some other levels too, most of which are original, but some are slightly altered versions of levels from the first game. This does make a lot of sense, as VR is a completely different medium than the first game, and not everyone plays these games in order. Eventually, there comes a time to prove your dedication, and you're told to prove yourself by reaching and destroying the pyramid. I think it's possible that these levels can be connected in a way. You have to fight for your life against red guys practically wherever you go. I believe that this may be an analogy for the government trying to get me to pay my taxes. No! 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 I don't wanna! After this, you basically just go back to playing through more levels. Then, it's time. You take out a red disc, but it's not going into your computer this time. It's going into you. It's time to play the last bunch of levels in the game. The last stage especially is really long, bringing in a flurry of enemies as fast as you could take them out. After destroying the pyramid, you're brought back to the apartment for the final time. The boss man himself shows up on your monitors. He says it's time to claim your award. Super Hot VR takes everything Super Hot does and changes the medium completely. Most of the time, that sounds like it would lead to a disaster, but the concept itself works excellently in VR. Many would argue, even better than the original. Super Hot Mind Control Delete is the third Super Hot game, and it was released in 2020. The game begins with nothing. Then you get to the title screen, which is completely empty apart from the word more. A far cry from the first game, which, as mentioned earlier, has a lot of bonus content and easter eggs in the UI. The first few levels start out just like the other two games, walking you through the basic mechanics of the series. And right when you think the game is gonna ramp up, well... Damn, bro, that's a lot of people. If you exit the game and re-enter, some meta text comes up and then puts you back into the game. But this time, it gives you a health system. Now you might think that it makes the game easier, but it's actually quite the contrary. The lives don't reset after each stage, only after each level. 
And just like in Super Hot VR, if you die while playing through a segment of a level, you have to restart the entire thing. After just one world, the game ends yet again. It gives you as many incentives as possible to leave, yet you can tell that there's much more to it. You go back into the game. In this game, to change up the gameplay, the main new mechanic is that the game gives you hacks. No, not those hacks. It's more like a temporary skill tree, which you could choose between one of two choices from a general pool of hacks you gain over the course of the game. Now obviously that sounds a bit unfair, but it all equals out due to the new health system. Strangely though, you don't actually have to kill every single enemy in a level. After you make it past the first world, the game opens up to have a little hub with a bunch of levels that branch out. I feel like the difficulty for this game is like diving into the deep end right after you learn to swim. The reuse of the levels is also a bit debatable in the quality perspective. The first game did this too, yeah. But the first game only ever reused its levels for challenges. Super Hot Mind Control Delete has reused levels baked directly into the game's formula, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I like the new UI and the level progression, but that doesn't really matter if I'm stuck playing the Yakuza level for each and every world. As a base game, I feel like Super Hot edges this one out. But as a sequel, Mind Control Delete does its job, and it does it well. Well enough to the point where I can actually recommend it if you like the other two games. At the end of the day, it's really just more killing red guys. And that's really all you need from this game anyways. So I'm sure that by now, someone out there is thinking, Well, if Superhot's so well received, then what's stopping someone from just stealing the primary feature of the game? Well, you get Time Shooter 2. There is no Time Shooter 1. This is a game that tries to steal the gimmick and art style from Super Hot for the sole purpose of making that cash cash money. However, while it's doing that, it takes away a lot of the things that make Super Hot fun in the first place. While the art style is similar to Super Hot, when you take a closer look, the gameplay differences are plain to see. The level design really doesn't work here. The game has you playing through the same five or so reused levels over and over again and I wouldn't say a single one of them was designed well. Enemies are constantly hidden behind walls, and speaking of walls, you can actually walk right through those in this game. And while in Super Hot, each gun is fairly equal, having different amounts of ammo and cooldown rates, in this game, there's no balancing whatsoever. The Assault Rifle is immediately the best weapon in the game, because it serves as a faster paced, higher ammo pistol instead of as an actual assault rifle. The AI on the bots is pretty bad as well. Enemies with melee weapons run straight at you, however, enemies with guns just tend to stand there being absolutely still while shooting in your general direction. Basically, you don't want to go into this game expecting super hot, but instead, a watered down, boring, poorly designed ripoff of the original game. Super Hot is a series that will always be one of my favorites. The style, the gameplay loop, and everything in between. Everything comes together to make a really polished final product, and every single one of these games is worth checking out. In short, I believe that they are truly the most innovative shooter. Zuh.